Hey guys, so if you have not been living under a rock, you probably have seen this absolutely viral song by Oliver Anthony, this new country song, which, disclaimer, I hate country music, literally with a passion. I know a lot of conservatives are going to get offended by that, but I do. It's not my thing. Anyhow, watch this. I'm sure you guys have seen this just to get some context and let's react to it together before we get into the tea. Before we get into the tea, and let me give you a little hint. This guy, Oliver Anthony, is an industry plant from Con Inc. I know it's sad. Con Inc. We're so desperate to have everyone and anyone on our side. Con Inc. planted this guy. And I'm going to prove just that to you right after we react to the song together. So before we do that, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and get ready to get startled. Not startled, shocked. I'm going to inform you on this industry plant, okay? Get excited, woot. I've been selling my soul. Not gonna lie, I'm kinda mad I have to listen to this song again right now, but let's get through it together. Working all day, overtime hours. For bullshit pay so I can sit out here and waste my life away Drag back home and drown my troubles away It's a damn shame what the world's gotten to For people like me, people like you Wish I could just wake up and it not be true But it is, oh it is, living in the new Look out for miners, and not just miners on an island somewhere. It's this very moment that this little sliver of something that conservatives talk about, which is what got conservatives so excited to talk about this, because, oh my gosh, he's mentioning Jeff Steen's island, and uh, I just wish our politicians cared about kids just like as much as they care about kids on the island getting, you know, molested by Jeffrey Epstein and other politicians. <sighs> So, you know, conservatives, we are so desperate, or no, not we, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not part of this movement anymore, but they are so desperate to have anyone, anyone, say anything that's remotely reasonable, not even right wing, but just remotely reasonable, and they just welcome them in with open arms, and this is part of the big tent conservatism, which I don't ascribe to, sorry, I just, I just don't. I think we need to have standards and also I want to point out that we have great people that already make music for the conservative movement like Bryce and Gray and you don't see Bryce and Gray's music being propped up by every single Con Inc. creator like this guy's song was out of the blue out of the blue we're gonna get more into that after let's after we finish this song but I'm already getting mad about it and my hair is getting in my way my hair is getting mad I'm getting mad Everyone's mad. Stay mad. But yeah, back to the back to the song. Lord, we got folks in the street, ain't got nothing to eat, and the whole beast milk and welfare. God, if you're five foot three and you're three hundred pounds, taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge drowns. Young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground, cause all this damn country does is keep on kicking them down Lord, it's a damn shame what the world's gotten to for people like me people like you wish I could just wake up and it not be true but it is Okay, that's enough. You get the gist. You get it. So like I just said, we already have great people in the industry like 4G Auto Blow, Bryson Gray, who are making very conservative music, but you do not see every single right-wing Con Inc. political commentator, creator, boosting them, who they have been in this, especially Bryson Gray, have been in this for years, 
Like they have this guy who literally just came out of nowhere. He literally joined Twitter on August 2023. That is this month. Joined Twitter this month and is already at 351,000 Twitter followers and follows two people. He just releases one song and already has 351.1k followers on Twitter when he just literally launched his Twitter account this month, probably within the past couple of days. You see why I'm suspicious about this? This makes no sense. Let's go to like Bryson Gray's Twitter and let's see his follower count and he's been doing this for years. 323,000. So Oliver Anthony already has more Twitter followers than Bryson Gray, who's been doing this for years, um, joined Twitter in December of 2014. But we're supposed to believe that this guy wasn't an industry plant? Got it. So the whole theory that people are talking about is, so this singer, whatever, country star, literally rose to fame overnight. Out of nowhere, literally just created a Twitter account and boom. Every single major Con Inc. influencer pushing him out. I will be putting them on the screen here so you can see you got like Matt Walsh. I mean, literally everyone. And the song's popularity was anything but authentic. Hate to break the news to you, but that's the truth. The key player who orchestrated this internet sensation is Jason Howerton. He is a Con Inc. shill and he quite literally created Oliver Anthony. I wanted to show you guys a tweet um, explaining kind of the timeline of this entire scenario. Lucky at the MAGA Hulk, and he said, I didn't want to comment on all of this because Oliver Anthony seems like a genuinely great guy, but Matt Walsh, M but Matt Walsh's sanctimonious word vomit forced my hand. Which, by the way, let's just check out what he's talking about. And so Matt Walsh tweeted out, the main reason the song resonates with so many people isn't political. It's because the song song is raw and authentic. We are suffocated by our artificiality. Everything around us is fake. Yeah, like this guy, like this entire media sensation overnight is fake. So preaching to the choir here. And also, the song is quite literally political. Mentions Jeffrey Epstein, mentions welfare. It's a political song. And guess what? All of these people who are talking about him in this song, they're political commentators. Why would they talk about this song if it wasn't because it's political? Make it make sense. Oh wait, you can't. There was nothing authentic about this song's rise to popularity. Jason Howerton seems to be the key player involved in the astroturfing campaign. He's the CEO of, Rich, of Reach Digital, which helps media companies and political influencers grow their social media footprint exponentially. So what Jason Howerton's company does is literally grow people's internet fame and success. So that's what he does for a living. Jason was one of the first accounts heavily promoting this song as he provided a background on Oliver Anthony and his faith. Jason indicates that Oliver Anthony has had been contracted to record the song. Jason also admits he even covered the cost to produce the record. So Jason literally covered the cost to produce the song. Obviously, he's going to help push it out. That's literally what he does. That's what his company does. And if he's going to pay to help produce the song, don't you think he's going to do everything in his abilities to actually make the song a viral sensation? Use your head, guys. It's common sense. So who wrote the song? And how did so many big right-wing accounts have the video ready to post simultaneously? That's something I was wondering too because I noticed so scrolling on Twitter, everyone is talking about this song. And I was like, what? Well, everyone, everyone is, okay? And that's not a coink, coink ink, I don't think. You can like the song and like its message without gaslighting us into believing that this was an authentic viral hit by a simple country man with a mic and guitar. Launch a product, get over 1.3 million hits overnight with the article Mr. Howerton shared on LinkedIn. This was just another conservative Inc. AstroTurf campaign. Embrace it. Jason Howerton is actually denying these claims. This is what Jason Howerton responded to his tweet. This is actually a thing. I'm incredibly flattered that y'all think I'm capable of manufacturing a once in a decade viral moment. Truly quite the compliment. 
Oliver could have posted that song on MySpace and it would have found a way to go viral. Y'all need to touch grass. First of all, this is not true. Um, he could not post the song on MySpace and have it go viral. What are you talking about? And like he um, admitted, he literally funded the cost to create the song and he's the CEO of Reach Digital, which literally makes people famous on online. Obviously, he's going to do everything in his power to promote the song that he literally paid to produce. Like, are we just supposed to be, like, does he think we're stupid? Does he think that we're supposed to just believe him? That, oh, I had no no hand in this? That I paid, to, I paid to produce a song and I didn't help push it out at all, even though that's what I do for a living? Yeah, sorry. I know I'm dumb because I'm a woman, but I'm not that dumb. Nice try, Jason Howerton. Jason Howerton also tweeted out, to be clear, I'm not Oliver Anthony's manager or anything else. So labels, campaigns, reporters, I promise continuing to call, email, and DM is a waste of time. I'm not giving you his number or otherwise connecting you. The full story is I offered to help him during a crazy time and love that I got to see him play. I am a man of my word. Love your lying words. He's a good man and I'd call him a friend, but this is the end of that story. Excited to see what he does next. P.S. Stop calling me. Well, even if he was just a good friend, I know when my friends like post something or want to launch something, I'm going to help them out as much as I can to help it do perform well. That's what friends do. So just stop gaslighting us and trying to make it seem like you had no hand in making the song go viral. I just don't like the lying and the gaslighting. I don't know. Call me crazy. And to be super duper extra clear, zero dollars ever exchanged hands, no arrangements, no deals, nothing. Last I'm going to say on this matter, moving on with life. Okay, you can move on. We're still going to question you though. That's what we're going to do here. So why should we care about this? Why is this a problem? First off, we hate conservative ink. Con Inc. They're not our friends. They're, they promote the Big Ten conservatism. They're not the true conservatism. Like they push very lukewarm values, which... We just don't, I personally don't agree with. I am more of an extremist. I think that we should be pushing true conservatism and not being lukewarm on it. And also what's annoying is that we have people like Bryson Gray, friend of the show, who does amazing things, has been making music for years and has been steadily growing his audience authentically but Con Inc. is going, not going to back him, not going to push his song out and have every single right-wing commentator post about it. No, they're going to have this other guy, um, Oliver Anthony, who literally came out of thin air, has literally just created a Twitter account this month and now has more followers than Bryson Gray. That You want to know why they like him too? They like someone like Oliver Anthony because he can be controlled. He has no scandals, no pasts, you know, no baggage, and they can control him because they created him. If you create someone's entire career, you now control their career and their power and their influence. So that's why Con Inc. loves them, and that is why we should be questioning this. We don't like liars, we don't like Con Inc., and we don't like industry plants that are pushing these lukewarm conservative values. Maybe if we had an industry plant c promoting hardcore, biblical, Christian conservative values, that would be another story, but of course that's not what this song was. It was very lukewarm. Oh, Epstein's Island. The miners on Epstein's Island. Yes, this is that that's something that even Democrats can agree with that politicians should be upset about that. That's not a that's not a conservative opinion to have. But of course, conservatives being so desperate for anything, like that's why conservatives love whenever Bill Maher says that fat phobia is not real or something, or that free speech is something that we should support. The conservatives are so eager and desperate and they just support him. See, he's our guy. He gets it. But really, Bill Maher is a liberal. He is not our friend. He's our enemy. But we're just so, no, them, not me, they're just so desperate for any sense of other people coming in and welcoming other people into the movement that they just water down what conservatism truly is. And that's why. We should have a problem with that. That's why you should have a problem with that. And to that, guys, I am going to end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, share the video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.